Right, Anthony. Well, I loved it. I mean, but I, 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 everything you said is uh, is crystal clear and very true. But what you really have to understand that this has happened before in our society. You can go back to the 1900s and see the split that Teddy Roosevelt tried to close. And now President Trump is, is stuck with the same challenge. You know, in my cell phone, I have him listed as Ted Rose because you can't put Donald Trump in your cell phone. <laughs> right. Right? And because I feel that he is the person that's going to pivot the lower and middle class mm -hmm. into rising living wages and rising standards. And you can just see what he did in the African-American and Hispanic-American unemployment mm -hmm. in terms of cutting the slack there. And so so for me, what you're saying is 100 percent true. I feel it all the time. I mean, and you can't look at your, your Twitter feed because uh, the more effective you are, uh, the more they come at you and the more they try to demonize you for your view. That's it. It's this condescension. I mean, look, it seems to me that, like, honestly, that you, one of the first times I saw that so clearly, frankly, was in relation to you. The scorn that was heaped on you for articulating that blue-collar voice in 2008 was something else. And yet, you know, I'm a proud Joe Sixpack. I am just proud of my blue-collar roots right. and know that, um, you know, the work ethic that's been instilled in me and the people around me, it, that's what has built America and made America great. But, you know, we have to ask ourselves, are we getting better in that arena of intolerance and violence and uh, we're not getting any better. The only way that the paradigm will shift, the only way that we're going to get better is to realize that this is an age old battle of good versus evil, uh, light and truth versus darkness and lies. The darkness has to flee when the light is switched on. People are asking all over the country, well, where's that light? What is that light? Go back to our founders, mm -hmm. our founding fathers, look to the good book and said, our Judeo-Christian principles on which we will build our country, we're going to write out our charters of liberty based on those principles. We are going to instill within our Constitution those principles. We're going to dedicate to God this country. We have strayed so far from that. That is the light, and that, that's the truth. We need to get back to that. That's the only way people's hearts and minds are going to change. It's not going to be this rhetoric spewed on both sides fighting and even tweeting it out amongst right. each other. It's deeper than that. It's bigger than that. I think that's really true, the, the depth. Uh, Lisa, what's your take? Well, I think the best thing to do is for people to stop trying to score political points when something terrible happens. There really does need to be universal condemnation when we see violence, particularly in the name of politics. Uh, as we saw uh, after the the uh, bomber, the mail bomber, everyone universally condemned him. We should have seen that as well when we saw Republicans on the receiving end of death threats throughout the Kavanaugh hearings. There just needs to be universal condemnation when people are doing things uh, bad and trafficking in violence or, you know, trying to hurt people. We should all just say that is wrong. Mm -hmm. But your, your comment about uh, Hillary Clinton and her sort of disdain for Trump supporters, I found that interesting because her basket of deplorable comments sort of crystallized why voters in states like Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania that hadn't gone Republican since Reagan went for him. You saw how she felt about tens of millions of people uh, in this country. And so that's why President Trump uh, resonated with those people, particularly when he had talked about the forgotten men and women. And these are people that were also forgotten under the Obama administration uh, as well. And so you can cl clearly kind of see why uh, people in those states went for President Trump. Yeah, I'm mean, just a very books about. quick last. We, we'll talk about the book in a second, but uh, we really will. Yep. Don't worry. No, no, but, um, I just back. wanted to, you know, th this, this, this contempt for, for fellow Americans, you don't see that in the other direction, it seems to me. It feels like the top sneering at the, the working people, isn't it? Yeah, and I think that has a lot. You know, go back to our, our, our roots, too. You know, our, our parents would have never put up with us being stinkers to our neighbors or to our right. classmates by bullying them and being intolerant. We're... Anthony, we were just talking about, hey, do you have a problem when somebody has a differing opinion? Do you want to go beat the crap out of them of and, and duke it out? No. Good we, conservatives respect other people. I know. Exactly. That's exactly right. Uh, the <laughs> governor and I would like to take yes. the battle into the intellectual marketplace of ideas and see if our ideas can That's win. That's right versus their ideas. And they I, want to silence us because they know that we may be able to convince people that what we're saying is true. Individual liberty, respect, self-determination, right. market forces, incentive-based market forces driving your success. Well, in the nicest possible way, that. I want to silence you right now because we have to go. Okay. But we'll be back in a second. Um, and again, I just want to leave this discussion with... Uh, he's, uh, Tom Hanks is absolutely right about that tweet. Love thy neighbor, no exceptions. But everyone needs to take that on board.